Isaac Asimov said it best. The most exciting phrase to hear in science, the one that heralds new discoveries is not Eureka, but that's funny. Throughout the history of science, many major discoveries came accidentally. Sometimes they came from recognizing potential in an unexpected product or even in a failed recipe's waste, turning accident into serendipity. Other times, discovery came out of pure desperation from a seemingly dead-end experiment. See, the entire modern chemical industry can be attributed to an accidental discovery that started with, well, garbage. In the 19th century, there was a new kind of waste floating around, coal tar. This was a stinky, sticky, awful muck left over from turning coal into gaslight. Before others figured out you could pave roads with this stuff, it was pretty much useless. Then the head of London's Royal College of Chemistry had an idea. August Wilhelm von Hoffmann noticed that some of the stuff in coal tar was similar to the stuff in known medicines. If he got the chemistry right, he thought, the world would have cheap, easy cures for disease. So, in 1856, he assigned 18-year-old William Perkin to Team Coal Tar. Perkin's job was to try to turn the gunk into quinine. Quinine was used to treat malaria, but the drug had to be extracted from tree bark, and that was time-consuming and really annoying. Perkin knew that quinine and coal tar had similar chemical formulas. So he figured, take some of the stuff that's in coal tar that's similar to quinine, Add some other stuff that looks like little bits of quinine, then remove the useless byproducts, and voila, right? Yeah, not so much. Perkin's first attempts got a reddish black powder instead of off-white quinine crystals. So he made a couple changes and tried it again. Instead of off-white powder, he got an even blacker powder. Oh well, wash it out with little alcohol and start over, right? But wait, when he added the alcohol, the black powder produced a breathtaking purple. Perkin was inspired. He somehow figured out this purple stuff could dye silk. Perkin saw dollar signs. At the time, purple dyed fabrics were made using exotic crushed snails, so only the very wealthy could afford to wear purple. Forget crushed snails, Perkin just made purple dye out of garbage. Perkin called this stuff mauve after a French flower because, well, you know, trashy purple didn't quite sound appealing. Dreaming of broad profit margins, Perkin did what many entrepreneurs did. He quit and started perhaps the first artificial dye factory. Within a few years, Mauve had two influential fashion fans, Queen Victoria and Napoleon III's wife, Empress Eugenie. A fashion craze known as Mauve measles erupted. Suddenly the middle class could afford a color beyond drab brown, off-white or gray. Perkin amassed a fortune of more than hundred million in today's dollars and retired at the ripe old age of 36. On Perkin's lead, chemical factories sprang up, dumpster diving nature for treasure. And this led to even more profitable accidents. In 1878, Constantin Fallberg brought his gunky coal tar work home with him by not washing his hands. At dinner one night, he found his bread incredibly sweet. Fallberg and his lab mates realized the source was a super sweet substance derived from coal tar residue they called saccharin. The accidental discoveries only grew in the 20th century. In the late 1930s, Roy Plunkett at DuPont was working with refrigerants named fluorinated hydrocarbons. One day, a new mix annoyingly solidified into a powder that made stuff slippery. Plunkett had stumbled on a new material called polytetrafluoroethylene which DuPont marketed as Teflon. Teflon was awesome! It coated metal for a no-stick surface. And also, Teflon didn't conduct electricity, so it was great for wire coating. This led father and son team, Bill and Bob Gore, to work with Teflon to make computer cables. Bill and Bob discovered that Teflon didn't stretch evenly, making it hard to work with. Frustrated, Bob yanked on a hunk of heated Teflon and it suddenly expanded to eight times its size. Turns out this heated, stretched hunk was over 70% air, so it could breathe easily while retaining the no-stick properties of its Teflon parent. And if you wove this into a fabric, it proved fantastic for lightweight raincoats that don't wrap you in your own sauna. You know this material as Gore-Tex. So much of what we enjoy in the modern world came from accidental discoveries. 
be it fashion craze causing mauve, sweeteners, Teflon, or Gore-Tex, the chemists behind this stuff were smart enough to recognize that they accidentally discovered something special. In the process, these moments became so much more than happy accidents. They became discoveries that changed the world. Hey Chemheads, thanks for watching. If you want more Sam Keen, check out a video he did for us on whether mega sharks still exist. And if you want more history, check out five black chemists who changed the world. And regardless, click that there subscribe button for more chemistry goodness every week. And a big thanks to the Chemical Heritage Foundation for helping us out with this video.